Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Brian from Kingdom Hearts Union Cross Nation. Now, as you can tell in today's video, it, <laughs> it's a bit of a hot topic that's going around the community right now. Okay, like we knew it was going to come sooner or later, we just didn't know when, but it's finally out. Now, I'm going to go over in a later, later video whether or not you should actually pull for the medal. This video is more so to talk about uh, Aqua herself, because Aqua's new ability, she brings a new me mechanic into the game, and to be frank, it's very concerning. Um, I've pretty much been talking about it all day uh, on Discord, on social media. Um, as you can tell right here, like, I made a post about it on YouTube. Uh, I found a Reddit article by Inverse Sense, who basically shared the same exact sentiments that I did, and I posted this article, or uh, this Reddit post on social media as well. Um, pretty much many people are having along the same train of thought that I am, and I, I believe uh, Damien and Endofin uh, kind of had the same type of uh, <clears throat> discussion as well. In a nutshell, okay, well, first of all, before before I jump ahead, let me quickly go ahead to let you guys know, for those of you that don't know, what exactly this medal does. Okay, now put it up, put it up on the screen. So, this is Supernova Kingdom Hearts 3 Anti-Aqua, alright? She's a tier 9 medal, costs 5 gauges, is AoE, does 4 hits, has a 7 star multiplier of a 40.43 to a 51.83. For one turn, she provides plus 15 tiers of general strength buffs, plus 10 tiers of magic strength buffs, plus 15 tiers of reverse strength buffs, minus 15 magic defense debuffs, I mean minus 10, my bad, uh, magic debuffs, and minus 15 reverse defense debuffs. Uh, she also has the ability to provide a 170% guilt boost, which is fairly standard among uh, tier 9 medals these days. Uh, she does more damage with one enemy or zero parts left, and the thing that's causing all the controversy is the new mechanic where she reflects 100% of all magic damage back at the opponent, okay? And I'll, I'll touch on that in a sec. Let me, let me read the supernova first. So, her supernova is an AoE supernova. Has a damage multiplier of uh, 110 to 160, but when you evolve it with Meow Wells, it goes to 150 to 200. Provides a 200% guilt boost. When you evolve with Meow Wells, it goes to 250%. And the Supernova ability, the damage output, has a chance of doing 30% uh, chance to ignore the enemy defense skill. So basically, it's like a Monster Sora attached to a Supernova, okay? The Supernova ability, I believe, does four hits. So, each hit has a 30% chance of ignoring the enemy's defense skills, alright? Now, the main thing of concern here is the whole, uh, reflects 100% of all magic damage, okay? Now, as it is right now, it's okay to have in the game. But the main concern, I mean, primarily because of the fact that it's only for magic medals at the moment, and that's the keyword at the moment, <laughs> but it's only for magic medals right now. So, as long as we don't have like a pure magic PvP week, we are essentially fine, okay? Um, or even if you do have you some Keyblades that have magic slots on them, uh, that's not a big deal either, and I'll get into that in a bit as well. Um, it's more so the fact when you have like a pure magic Keyblade being used, or an entire week of mostly key, uh, magic keyblades being used. That's when it becomes scary uh, because people with these medals will just basically automatically win. Uh, people are bringing up that this medal is basically a direct hard counter to Monster Sora. Um, personally, I don't find Monster Sora to be that much of a problem, to be honest. Uh, if you utilize proper strategy easily, especially during the five keyblade weeks. Uh, if you can, if you utilize strategy properly, you can easily get around the Monster Sora. Like, I've had so many, uh, different games where I've just completely destroyed people who happen to have, like, three or four Monster Soras, but because simply I had a better strategy than they did, uh, it didn't matter. Right now, here's even a picture of me reaching 15th place in PvP. Uh, and it's been, what, like three days now? And I've been able to get pretty much top 
50 fairly consistently uh, so far, strictly because of the fact that people are just not utilizing good strategy, or an any strategy for that matter. <laughs> Most people are simply just putting their best Keyblades first, uh, and then just going in order from best to worst as they go on, which is not really a good strategy at all. But that's what people are doing. Um, and I'm just destroying people with Monster Swords. Anti Aqua, on the other hand, isn't like that. Because unlike Monster Sora, which I'm pretty much fine with, Monster Sora is only broken, or you know, broken, uh, if you have the setup to go along with it. If you have like a ton of copy medals that can actually utilize and take full advantage of the 30% ability, ignoring ability. However, um, but if you happen to use a good strategy where you can turtle and use status ailments to make them skip their main buff or debuff for medals in the first place, then Monster Sora isn't a big deal at all whatsoever. It's literally chump change just like the rest of the damage medals um, as long as you can mess up the op opponent properly. Okay, you get basically there's counterplay involved. But with Anti-Aqua, okay, you can't do that. Uh, and I actually wrote down kind of a list of all the different interactions so far that we know of as a community um, in regards to how they work with Reflect. So in terms of Reflect, as of right now, there's only one solid hard counter to the Reflect ability, at least for Aqua, okay, because she's the only one in the, in the game right now. Uh, and as it is at the moment, the only medals that can actually kind of hard counter the reflectability as of right now are any of the medals that can change a medal's attribute. So this is basically kind of like going along back in the old days of the, uh, of like the prime medal. So like for example, prime Chernabog, this medal, if it decides to load, this medal can make the next medal turn into a power type medal. Uh, Prime HD King Mickey, which is still kind of personal favorite, to, to be honest. Uh, ch ch changes the next medal into a power medal. Uh, Timeless River Sora, which was a high score challenge medal. This turns the next medal into a speed medal. Uh, the Foretellers change the next medal into their respective attribute. Like, these are the type of medals that, at the moment, are the only ones that can actually get around Aqua, specifically. Um, and, of course, you would want them to be any of the non-magic uh, medals. So, Chernabog, uh, Kingdom Hearts 2 Yuffie, HD King Mickey, Thomas River Sora, Ased, Gula, uh, Ira. Any of these are pretty much the only main ways as of right now to turn your current magic medals into a speed or power medal. Uh, so that way they, your damage doesn't get reflected by Aqua. Okay, so that's one interaction. Another interaction that needs testing is whether or not the reflectability can or cannot be dispelled, uh, such as medals like these, like the Incredibles 2, Toon Swear and Goofy, Kira number 12, even old medals such as uh, Alice, Bell A and such, Shiki, Neku, Joshua, Man in Black, like these type of medals. Uh, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty confident that it is not. Pretty confident that this, you cannot dispel the reflectability. Um, but more, but it hasn't actually been confirmed yet, okay? It's kind of hard to test that. You kind of have to, like, coincidentally come up to someone in PvP <laughs> who happens to have a metal like this while you're using an Aqua to see if that happens or not. Um, so it's kind of hard to test that. But it's technically unconfirmed. Um, but I am assuming that you cannot dispel the reflectability. Another interaction that also needs to be tested is whether or not that when you're... How do you word it? When your damage gets reflected back at you, do any sort of turtling buffs that you have on yourself... Can any turtle buffs you have on yourself be uh, help mitigate the damage? Okay, so example again. Uh, me turtle metals like Kingdom Hearts 3 Mini. So let's say... Let's say you use Kingdom Hearts 3 Mini, or you even have Turtle Buffs carry over from the previous turn in PvP, and next turn you do damage against an Aqua and such, or whatever, okay? Um, would the 1 million damage you do to the opponent still do 1 million to you, or would your Turtle Buffs help reduce that 1 million damage, okay? That's what I 
questioning right now the only tests that have been confirmed uh, and I even spoke to Robloid about this at the moment uh, is that we believe that it's just straight up 1 million damage to you regardless of any buffs or debuffs you have uh, but because of the fact that it actually hasn't been officially tested uh, that's technically unconfirmed as of right now. Now two more things that need to be mentioned about the reflectability is that the reflectability only reflects damage and does not reflect anything else. Okay, so so buffs and debuffs will still get applied to you regardless, as well as you will still get inflicted by status ailments if the opponent does that against you. However, any damage that done against you will be reflected. Only damage gets reflected. Anything else outside of purely damage will not get reflected. It's also worth noting as well that for the reflectability, um, you still take the damage. However, all that happens is that you take the damage, but you also deal in the exact same amount back at the opponent too, okay? It's almost like you're attacking the opponent on their turn while they're attacking you. <laughs> so in a way, the damage kind of nullifies, or yeah, basically it kind of like nullifies itself. Now back to the topic at hand. The main concern that I have for the future, because remember, it's not really a problem right now, but my main concern is what happens when a power and speed version finally come out, okay? Because theoretically, once a power and speed version come out, you could basically run all three different attributes on a single setup and just basically win every single PvP game, okay? And theoretically as well, uh, just like in the case with Monster Sword, Monster Sword has been spreading around quite a lot lately. Like more and more people are continuously getting Monster Swords now. Uh, it's starting to more or less start becoming mainstream. I'm pretty much going to be assuming as well that these medals will also kind of follow the same trend. And if that's the case, when a power and speed version finally come out, uh, what is stopping someone from just running all three different Tra uh, attribute medals on every single Keyblade that you attack first with in PvP. Pretty much guaranteeing that you will always win that round in PvP. Uh, so on a three weed, on a three Keyblade week setup, uh, you know, week for PvP, as long as you have two copies of each attribute, you you're pretty much will guarantee win every single <laughs> PvP, okay? Uh, for five Keyblade week, uh, if you have three copies of each, you're guaranteed to win every single every single PvP battle. It's 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 really, and and the fact that there's no counterplay at all whatsoever is very bad. Okay, so typically, like in the case with Monster Sora, uh, in Monster Sora's case, for example, you can still there's still counterplay involved in get and playing around the Monster Sora and still and even beating Monster Sora, which is simply using status elements to make them skip your main buff or debuff or medals and using turtle methods uh, in order to reduce the amount of damage they can do to you in the first place. Hence, making the 30% chance for Monster Sora pretty much null and void because they only do like two damage in the first place. But for Dark Aqua's case, that doesn't matter, okay? Because uh, even if you use status ailments, status ailments don't matter because they're reflecting your damage back at you. It, it doesn't matter how much damage the opponent does to you at all. They're basically saying that, hey, you can basically kill yourself this round. I win regardless, okay? Uh, and same thing with turtling. Uh, because turtling basically follows the same... Uh, concept is ailments. Okay, they're trying to achieve the same goal, which is to make the to mess the opponent up and make them do less damage. All right, but so ailments are out of the question. You can't use ailment strategies against reflect. Uh, turtling's out of the question. You can't use turtling against it. Damage doesn't do anything against it because it obviously just reflects damage. So you you basically just completely neutered all three existing strategies in the game and just gave it a big middle finger and said that you can't you can't play the game all right um that's a big problem because of the fact that once these medals start becoming mainstream and once the other two attributes become available as well basically anyone can win pvp all the time and that is got to be the most <laughs> t 
toxic and unfun meta I will ever see if that ends up being the case. Okay, if they don't do if they don't bring anything to the game or change anything into the game that will help uh, balance and bring in a form of counterplay to these metals to this ability specifically, then you might as well just kind of quit. <laughs> At least quit PvP, okay? Because uh, it's not going to be worth it. Because even a a, a a level one scrub, if they just have these medals, they could fight a you know level 500 veteran who's been playing for three years, uh, is a whale top 10 in PvP, and they could still beat them, just simply because of the fact that they have the medals and they went first, they attacked first. Like it's, it's, it's completely broken. Like it's it's one of the rare times where you can actually say that this is a game-changing metal or at least specifically for PvP. For PvP, it's game-changing, okay? And I don't use the, the term game-changing that lightly. Uh, in case you don't know, I have a difference between game-breaking and game-changing. Game-breaking is typically when like a new ability or something comes out that will change the meta a little bit, um, but doesn't make too much of a difference in the in the meta. Okay. Whereas game uh, game changing is where the metal is just or ability that the metal has is just so ridiculous that the entire metal literally warps around that one metal specifically. Okay. That's what that's the difference between game breaking and game changing. Okay. Um, Aqua, for specifically PvP, is game-changing, alright? Monster Sora, on the other hand, was game-breaking, okay? Just, just to add a little bit of difference there, okay? So, back to what I was talking about before, because of the fact that there's pretty much no counterplay involved, um, all strategy is completely null and void, which, pretty much for players like myself who, who find the only aspect of PvP to be fun is the strategy component itself. Because there's no strategy involved, it basically make, takes all the fun out of PvP completely away. All right? um, on top of the fact that it's not going to be fun to basically to essentially be hitting yourself every single PvP round. They're, they're, like, why, why, why do, at that point, you might as well ask yourself, why do I even bother doing PvP then, if I'm literally just killing myself <laughs> every single round? I might as well just not even do the rounds, in a sense. Technically, you would still want to do them so that way you can get your weekly rewards from PvP for the daily missions and stuff, and the weekly missions. But aside from that, like, there's no point. There would be no point. Um, so, in order to balance this, there's a few things that they can do to easily balance this okay the first one being which is currently already available in the game make more metals that can change attributes of existing metals so uh metals like the prime metals like i mentioned before that can change attributes however uh once the other two attributes of aqua come out so power and speed come out these will start becoming irrelevant as well okay these are only available right now because aqua is the only version currently out for magic once speed and power come out, these are pretty much useless. So aside from those, there's pretty much only really two uh, good ways, in my opinion, that can actually balance the mechanic while at the same time leaving the mechanic intact, okay? Uh, to leave it as it is, okay? Personally, just a little side tangent, personally I feel like that the 100%, uh, where is it? Personally I feel like that the 100% thing is a little too much they should have made it more like i don't know 40 percent or maybe even like 50 percent i'd be happy with even 60 or 70 percent just less than 100 if they just simply did it like that um that alone would have already made the metal pretty balanced but because they did they chose not to do so we're just going to ignore that okay so aside from that fact some of the easiest ways they can still fix uh or you know balance or bring in counterplay to the mechanic is to a they make it so that only one type of attribute reflect can be available at a time so like if i use so if i use my dark aqua for example right here and i gain that magic reflect all right as soon as i use whatever the power or speed version is uh the power or speed reflect would then replace the magic reflect and you would only have the power or speed reflect instead okay that is one way that they could balance 
the, the reflectability. The second way, and personally, I feel like this is probably the better way to go about it, um, and would honestly still maintain the same level of what PvP is now while still being able to utilize the Aqua Metal, is to simply make it where all the Dispel Metals can dispel the reflectability okay because remember like i said before i am pretty sure i'm pretty confident the fact that you can't at the moment you cannot dispel reflect but i think that they did make it so that reflect can be dispelled um it will bring in that level of uh counterplay that would be needed uh into pvp so pretty much any smart player would then from that point onward start using uh these dispel metals on turns that they would attack second uh, in order to help counter the uh, the reflectabilities at the very least okay so that would be what you would want if you do it that way then at the very least there's some sort of like uh, counteracting triangle going on the same way how kind of like there's like ailments damage and turtle and they kind of like all counter each other more or less okay uh, the same thing could then apply to this so that way you have the uh, reflectability. Reflectability would counter Monster Sora. Okay. Uh, Monster Sora could then counter Dispel Metals, and Dispel Metals then it could then counter the uh, the reflectability. That would pretty much be the best way to go about things. And then even better, you could even combine two or three of those if you really wanted to, depending on the Keyblades that are being used that week and stuff. Um, but just simply having the Dispel. Uh, but simply being able to dispel the reflect, in my opinion, is probably the cleanest and healthiest way to make to make sure that me the meta stays healthy um, for PvP in the long run. Not only to balance the reflectability, but also at the same time, it would bring make it so that people will start using the. Uh, the dispel metals more often. It would also possibly mean that they might even make more dispel metals more often. Maybe attach them to attack actual damage metals for once. Um, I don't think we've yet to seen an actual damage metal that also dispels the opponent. So it would be nice to see something like that. But other than that guys, that's pretty much it for today. I am very concerned about the upcoming future and meta for PvP now that this meta has come out. I am sincerely hoping that Square Enix and Bitgroove, the developers of the game, actually do something right for once <laughs> to help balance uh, this because if they don't bring anything into the game by the time uh, the power and speed version of Aqua come out in order to balance the mechanic, um, I'm pretty much gonna more or less just quit PvP. Uh, I won't quit the game, because the rest of the game is still kind of, you know, all right. But I would, like, PvP would just not be fun anymore. Um, there would just be no point doing it. I'll just start, I'll just do my dailies and that's it. But other than that, I would love to hear what your guys' thoughts and opinions are in the comment section down below. If you have any sort of thoughts as to how you would balance the mechanic in a fair way and keep it fun, Go ahead and let me know, but if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe, and hit that bell button. This is the best way I know when I upload more videos such as this one. My name is Brian from Kingdom Hearts Cross Nation, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace, guys.